Welcome back to part 5 of this tutorial. In this portion we're going to do all the finishing touches. So what I have right here is just a piece of wool that I rolled up. I'm going to felt it into sort of a flat shape that I'm going to use to be just the neck and the start of the chest. I'm going to add a little bit more wool to make this a little bit wider. I want it to be about the width of the head. I'm just going to keep felting this to be really flat and then along the bottom edge where the frame will touch, I'm going to felt it flat. Right here I added a small piece of wool just to connect this neck region to the head. It doesn't have to be really strong, it's just to hold it together so that it's all one piece as this whole thing is going to be glued into a frame. And I start layering the dark orange and the medium orange starting in the corners where the shoulders are, the chest area, and then moving inward so that the whole thing is going to have a slight V shape or semicircle shape to the pattern. So I'm just alternating again between the medium and the dark orange. And then I start layering the pale orange, which will fill the rest of the neck region all the way up to the cheeks. So I'm using just the pale orange. And this part, thankfully, is not time-lapse, so you can see better. It's the same process that I attached the fur on the rest of the cat. I'm just felting down a center line on each piece of roving, and then I fold it over. So felt down the center, fold it over, and then felt along the edge. So again, lay down the roving, felt down a center line, fold it over, and then felt down that edge. And I'm gonna attach a little bit to blend into the cheek and into the muzzle. So this is again just the pale orange and I'm just making it so that where the muzzle's at sort of blends into the longer fur of the cheek. Then I'm going to attach the white roving right underneath the jaw, like the back of the chin area where the neck is, where the neck and the chin meet. And I'm just attaching one half of the roving. Just one edge basically is going to be fully felted into the muzzle, the underneath of the muzzle, like right at the neck, the throat. And then the other end of the roving is going to be left unattached and it'll just lay across the pale orange roving, just kind of blend it into the white of the muzzle area blending into the more orangey color on the chest. Just kind of, I always tend to look for all the little details. Now right here actually what I'm doing is reverse felting. I decided I wanted to get a little more blending right there. So this is a reverse felting needle and I'm doing that right here as well. So what it does is it pulls the core wool out just little bits of it and it kind of softens the look. So along the muzzle, just kind of pulling some of that out and then brushing it down. Next I'm going to add the marks for the whiskers. So the whiskers in the very front I'm going to use a medium orange and then as they go further back and they're more prominent looking I'll use the darker orange. I'm not going to show this whole process, it's the same for every whisker, just poking in a teeny bit of color. Notice that the whiskers grow in rows, they're not like random speckles, they're in nice organized rows that have a slight curve. This is the reverse needle again, so I'm going in between the rows of whiskers and I'm pulling out a little bit of the wool to just to give it a softened look, a more fuzzy softened look on the muzzle. I'm going to do that in between every row of whiskers and even on this lower part of the muzzle. I'm just going to pull out some of that so it gets a, a softer, fuzzy look. begin the process of trimming the fur. 
And again, I just really go very slowly with this, just trimming little bits at a time because if you trim too much, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to correct it. So I'm trying to keep in mind the shape that I want his face to have and keep in mind that he is a short-haired cat, so I don't want him to look really scruffy. But I kind of am starting on the edges and then just trimming. Even here, he, he shouldn't be too scruffy looking because he is a short coat tabby. So I'm just gonna keep kind of trimming away all the edges. And right at the base of the ear, the fur should sort of uh, have an angle right there that it, that it points inward right under the ear. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to try to leave that little indent that you see in the fur right below the ear and then have the cheek kind of come out more rounded just below the ear. So that little indent, I want to try to leave that on both ears. He's still a little bit fluffier on the face than I want him to be, so I'm going to go ahead and start trimming down some more along the edges of the face. This is the 40T needle and I'm just kind of fine tuning the stripes on the side of his face. I'm pushing the lower one up a little more because it was kind of pointed too, too far down. The angle wasn't quite right. So I know it's kind of hard to see on that side, but on this side I'll, I'm going to do it too. So I kind of see how I made it point up a little more so that the two stripes look like they're going to merge. They don't quite merge, but they look like they're pointing toward each other like they would merge. Just doing a little bit more trimming. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more white on this one side. I just felt like it wasn't symmetrical, so we added a little bit more. Just blending the way the, the fur looks. This is the reverse needle, so I was just kind of doing a little bit of reverse felting there to blend it. And now what I am doing is actually 
It's really hard to see, but there we go. I'm trimming the top of the head, the way the fur is. It was a little bit rounded, and I didn't want it to appear rounded between the ears. Okay, now I'm, I'm touching up the ears with a little bit of medium orange, even though they're mostly the dark orange, but I'm putting a little bit of medium on there and just covering up the white that poked through when I put the white hairs inside the ear. So if you have the needle sort of poking in downward rather than straight through, that orange color won't poke out through to the front. So that's what you want to try to do. And I decide to add a little bit more white to that lower portion of the eye, just to make it a little bit wider. I'm working on that little indent below the ear again to make sure that it's really clearly defined. And actually the top of the head is still a little bit too round, so I'm gonna to have to trim it some more. I'm just checking to see that it's gonna fit inside the frame, which it will. But if you see that little bit of rounding, I really don't want that. I want it to look flat between the ears. So I'm just gonna trim away in the center so that it becomes more flat. So now that his face and fur and pattern are all complete, he really just needs his whiskers. So I'm using this fishing line. It's kind of a unique fishing line. It has a really unique feel to it. It's sort of poseable. You can actually like bend it and then unbend it. So what I did was cut a strand that is longer than the width of the face. I put a knot in it. 
using a little bit of tacky glue. I just put on a little piece of paper. And I'm going to just thread this needle and just bend the, um, the fishing line over right at the end there. And this is really densely felted, so I have to use pliers to, to get this needle to go through. Anyway, I'm going to pull it through and I will put, see how I just smoothed out that crease in the, the line? It's really interesting stuff. Anyway, I put a little dollop of glue on the knot and then just pull it toward the center of the muzzle. Then I'm going to repeat this process with a whole bunch more whiskers. Obviously not every single whisker that the cat has, but I'm just going to try and what I try to do is I try to put it in at one of the dots that I made and then pull it through a different dot on the other side. I usually get pretty lucky and it just lines up perfectly but not always so you'll see a couple times I have to adjust it. I'm not aiming for an exact whisker but I am trying to make it so that the whiskers are fairly evenly spaced out on the muzzle so that there's not just like one clump of whiskers on one side of the face. I want them to be fairly even looking so that, you know, there's a few maybe up higher on the muzzle, a few down lower, you know, some in the middle, just, just so it kind of looks believable. You'll see here that it did not come out at one of the little whisker dots. So I'm just adjusting and then I finally hit one. Now that I have the amount of whiskers that I like, I'm going to trim them to be an appropriate length. And I just use um, these little scissors that I have and I really put the whisker near the very, very um, innermost part of the, the cutting part and then do a quick cut. Because this, this fishing line, if you don't cut it like a real quick cut, it tends to make a, a frayed end and I want it to look really smooth. If you have a pet cat that you're making a portrait of and they've shed a bunch of their whiskers like maybe in their bed or somewhere, if you can collect the real whiskers they'll look even nicer and they kind of have a needle built in so you just put a little bit of glue on the tip of a real whisker and stab it into the muzzle. So I'm taking one of the little pieces that I trimmed off and I'm going to put it up in the brow, like the little eyebrow whiskers. And I'm just tucking it in and gluing it in place. And since this is an item that is just intended to be on display, on a wall, this should hold just fine. I'm going to add three of these little eyebrow whiskers on each side and just have them sort of curving outward.
So most of the time you keep seeing this cat from its left side and I just wanted to show you it from different angles because it probably looks like maybe it's not symmetrical if you keep looking at it from just that one view. But I tried really hard to make it be symmetrical. So I'm just testing out that it's going to fit well once again in this shadow box. Now that I have the shadow box all together and it looks like it should fit just fine. So I'm going to glue it down. This is just some super glue that I use. If that does not dry super quickly. It's a slow dry ultra gel control, which to me mostly just means that it dries slowly so that you have more control over where you place the item. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of that around the edges and then in the center where it's a little bit more um, concave, I'm going to put uh, some of the tacky glue that's it's thicker and more globby. And this whole time I'm just holding him by the muzzle so that I don't mess up any of the more delicate features. And I carefully place him in the shadow box and just start pressing to make sure the glue makes good contact really press make sure all of it makes contact to kind of hold the eyes and this video is sped up so this is twice as fast as real life just kind of making sure that everything is secure I'm rotating him just a little there just making sure he's secured I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's been helpful if you are trying to make your own needle felted cat portrait. Thanks so much for watching.